<laughs> Get ready for a ride in the Wayback Machine, because we're heading to the 90s. <laughs> Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 most controversial things on 90s TV. <laughs> for this list, we're looking at episodes and moments from 90s television that shocked us or caused public controversy on a large cultural scale. Hot stuff coming through. <laughs> Dad, why did you bring me to a gay steel mill? We'll also be taking into account the level of controversy brought on by the vibe of a series as a whole, programs which, by nature, tended to push the envelope for content or controversy. Doherty does not want Rivera in the ring, throws him right out to the concrete Madison Square Garden floor. Number 10. Heroes, Beavis and Butthead. Whoa, guns are cool. <laughs> this MTV animated series from creator Mike Judge was known for courting controversy almost from the very beginning. But this second season episode proved particularly troublesome for Judge and his crew. Hey there, welcome to Bob's Fancy Skeet. You boys 18? Uh, no. <clears throat> Let me start again. Hey there, you boys 18! In Heroes, our dim-witted metalhead protagonists waltz into a gun store, easily pick up a couple of rifles, and decide to go skeet shooting. This is cool. Uh... Push. Uh, pull. <laughs> Unfortunately, their target practice ends with the duo accidentally shooting down an airplane that crash lands in a field not far off. <laughs> this little stunt naturally resulted in Beavis and Butthead receiving complaints not only from anti-gun activists, but also from concerned parents, and got the episode banned. We're trapped in here! Please, we have two pregnant women on board! <laughs> How did that happen? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Number 9. The WWF During the Attitude Era through some 50 years, the World Wrestling Federation has been an entertainment mainstay here in North America and all over the world. One of the reasons for that longevity is as the times have changed, so have we. Vince McMahon's World Wrestling Federation, now known as World Wrestling Entertainment, underwent a sharp creative makeover back in the late 90s, shocking those who grew up in the more innocent times of cartoonish 80s wrestling. Flying ahead, scissors almost, as he was up on his shoulder. Couldn't control the weight, he hooked the leg, he got him, I don't believe it! WWF during the Attitude Era, as it eventually came to be known, was a playground of realistically bloody violence, adult imagery, and bizarre storylines, all of which fans ate up like candy. Parents weren't as amused, and often complained to McMahon about the program's drastic shift to maturely themed content. Dearly in the land, we gather here this evening to join Stephanie Marie McMahon and the unholy wedlock with the Lord of Darkness. Time and a lack of serious competition would eventually soften the WWE's creative stance, however, with today's programming coming across as decidedly more PG than extreme. Sheamus gonna go for an F5 ride! And another spear! And again, Roman Reigns! Number 8, the puppy episode, Ellen. She's tight. I, I, know, I feel so comfortable with you. Yeah. Yeah, that's how I feel with you. If there's one thing I'm feeling right now, it's comfortable. Where do we start with this one? Perhaps with the humorously misleading title of the puppy episode? I don't date men. Oh. <laughs> Why? Or maybe we can discuss how bold it was for comedian Ellen DeGeneres to use her ABC sitcom as a vehicle for her and her character's coming out party. I'm 35 years old. I'm so afraid to tell people. I mean, I just... Susan, I'm gay. It wasn't quite as easy back in 1997 for a situation comedy to have a lesbian leading character. But that's exactly the trail DeGeneres was blazing with this episode. Husband, miss, would you like to try one of our new granola bars? They're the perfect snack, whether you're on the go or in the closet. ABC faced criticism and backlash 
from both religious groups and advertisers concerning the episode, but the two-part puppy nevertheless aired unedited, and in the process gained DeGeneres a whole new audience of appreciative fans. For God's sake, Ellen, tell him you're gay! <laughs> Number 7. Home, The X-Files We're witnessing Scully's undiluted animal behavior. Mankind absent its own creation of civilization, technology, and information regressed to an almost prehistoric state. The subject of incest is never an easy one to broach, even on the most serious of dramas. Never mind a science fiction juggernaut like Chris Carter's The X-Files. Raise and breed their own stock, if you get my meaning. The controversial fan-favorite episode Home shocked and horrified viewers back in 96 with its grim and bleak portrayal of the deformed Peacock family who've been burying babies alive in the backyard of their property. This plot point alone would be enough to earn the show its parental discretion advisory, but Home pushed the boundaries that much further by adding in the fact that the Peacock's matriarch had been inbreeding with her sons for years, disturbing not only Mulder and Scully, but also audiences around the world. We're gonna, we're gonna make sure that you get home. <laughs> Well, she already is home. It's Mrs. Peacock. She's their mother. Number six, Homer's Phobia, The Simpsons. Listen up. I want all of you to say hello to The Simpsons. Hello. Has the whole world gone insane? The Simpsons has always been known for its clever bits of social commentary, but this season eight episode stands as one of the strongest of the entire series. You're all sick. Oh, be nice! Noted exploitation filmmaker John Waters voices the Simpson family's new friend John, whose revealed homosexuality comes across as a threat to Homer. Listen carefully. John is a ho mo right. sexual. <laughs> it wasn't too often where we saw the lovably dim-witted Homer offering up some sincere, troubled pathos, but the writers here did a great job at juggling a father's love for his family balanced against his own recently discovered prejudices. I don't want you calling him a sissy. This guy's a fruit and a... No, wait, 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 queer, queer, queer. That's what you like to be called, right? Well, that or John. Number five, Oz. You're gonna die. Not today. The landscape of violence on cable television has always been one of peaks and valleys, but Oz managed to push the creative envelope for what would be displayed on the small screen. This original HBO series was set in a maximum security prison and displayed in shocking detail all of the daily bits of violence, rape, and intrigue that go on behind bars. Inmates and guards alike indulged in the carnage, which ranged from gang rape and murder to scatological humiliation. You remember this? Making Oz a program that can still manage to disturb even today. Number four, politically incorrect. The real incriminating thing for Clinton is that the Indians kept calling him by his Indian name, Pocahontas. There may not have been any rampant sex or violence on Politically Incorrect with Bill Maher, but this late night talk show was never without its fireworks. They take a viable baby from a mother all the way except for the top of the head, shove a scissors through the base of its skull and suck out its brains, and you're complaining about him. Politically Incorrect thrived on conversation and in-depth discussions with people who possessed diverse and passionate opinions about everything from social culture to politics. Well, you're telling sale, horny teenagers is the, the only football. thing that you can do is be abstinent. And condoms don't work, so kids are not going to use condoms because they're, they're going to listen to you and figure, well, why should we even use condoms? And that, to me, is irresponsible. As a result, Mars show consistently provided a forum for those whose positions didn't always make for easy listening, ensuring that heated arguments would become the norm. Marr would even land in political hot water himself due to some controversial statements the comedian made on his program shortly after 9-11, resulting in calls for his cancellation. We have been the cowards lobbing cruise missiles from 2,000 miles away. Absolutely. That's cowardly. 
Number three, Earshot, Buffy the Vampire Slayer. It's time tomorrow. I'll kill you all. This episode of Buffy falls on our list thanks to its timing with Earshot having the unfortunate distinction of being scheduled to air one week after the Columbine High School Massacre. The episode doesn't actually deal with gun violence in reference to homicide, however, instead telling a sad tale of one student's suicide in a clock tower. Well, I, I... I wouldn't ever hurt anybody. I came up here to kill myself. Still, the fact that Earshot contained a scene of a young teen assembling a rifle caused its network, the WB, to air a rerun episode instead, preempting Earshot until later in the season. Number two, the Puerto Rican Day, Seinfeld. No. It's the Puerto Rican Day Parade! It may seem difficult to believe that an episode of that show about nothing could be banned for its content, but that's exactly what happened to the Puerto Rican Day episode of Seinfeld. Well, the streets are all blocked. I think every Puerto Rican in the world is out here. Well, it is our day. Ooh. Wrong car. Sorry. In this episode, an unfortunate series of events leads to Kramer's accidental burning of the Puerto Rican flag. Oh, no smell. <laughs> hey, there's a guy burning the Puerto Rican flag! The resulting heat was not only focused on Cosmo, however, but also on the show itself, with NBC being forced to issue an apology and to ban the episode altogether. Imagine a laugh you could have gotten if you had yelled that out at the actual disaster. It wasn't until 2002 that the episode began airing unedited in syndication. I just have one thing to say to you boys. <laughs> Before we reveal our number one pick, here are some honorable mentions. Who are you guys? We're the Buffalo Gales! What are you thinking, Buster? Let's drink it! Drink it? But Buster, this isn't like you. I know, but in this episode, we're showing the evils of alcohol. Some people may say, oh, that's ignorant. We all know, you know, HIV can't be drinks. But you know what? I don't know. I've never lived with anybody with HIV. Well, I guess we're gonna agree to disagree. Number one, The Jerry Springer Show. You oh, sh shut minutes. your face right now. <laughs> Come on, you know you love it. You're not alone either, as it seemed that just about everyone was tuning into the Jerry Springer show back in the 90s for their daily dose of talk show chaos. This former mayor of Cincinnati translated his natural ease in front of the camera into a career as ringmaster for his own circus of allegedly choreographed fistfights, outrageous storylines, and salacious material, the likes of which would make just about anyone blush. We're going to meet the woman now who is married to your brother and has a child with your father. The Jerry Springer Show quickly became known as the most controversial tabloid talk show around consistently upping the ante in terms of guests, actors posing as guests, and general all-around lunacy. Get the story get right. So you will know. Adopt the half greedy ass bitch. Okay, Don't be jealous. <laughs> Do you agree with our list? What did you find controversial on 90s TV? For more fun top 10 lists published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. When the preoccupation with flatulence takes precedence over human life. Mm.